Let's get the read on all of this from John Hanna, the former advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, Foundation for Defense of Democracies. John, what do you make of the timing of all this? Well, the timing was clearly a surprise to everybody, Neil, but I, I've got to say that the two-year mark isn't an atypical point for right. a senior administration official to, to leave an administration. So I take it largely at face value that she felt with a successful uh, second U.N. General Assembly under her belt just a couple of weeks ago that this was a good time to make the announcement and move on. All right, so now the question becomes who in her place, and that's obviously we have a little bit of time here until the end of the year. I would take it face value what she is saying, the president was saying. Would there be a short list of people uh, considered? Would it be a bump up from someone who's already serving in the administration? I think it could be any of those things. We're all speculating at this point in time. These are very big shoes to fill. I mean, she was incredibly effective in a very, very tough and challenging job. Uh, she did make it a uh, very high profile, and she was certainly the highest profile woman in this administration. So whether the president would like to replace her with somebody like Adina Powell, people hear about, uh, who worked for his administration as somebody he and his family trust, uh, is certainly possible. But there are probably a long list of senators and former senators who might not want to, who might want to take their hand at this as well. You know, I'm just wondering after the Kavanaugh hearings and, and, and the precedent that was set of going back to whatever you were doing in high school, whether you'll find as many people volunteering for this as you would have. Yeah, well, I think anybody who's going to be nominated to this kind of job is got, going to have to be uh, thinking twice, particularly after the nastiness of the, uh, the Kavanaugh nomination fight. But uh, I think there are still plenty of senior people out there with the credentials who are, who are more than willing to serve. And like Ambassador Haley said, this was really the greatest honor of her life, to be able to go into the anti-American viper's desk of the United, uh, of the United Nations and uh, defend and explain the interests and policies of the United States of America to the world. You know, John, much had been made of the fact that she had sometimes acrimonious relations uh, with uh, Rex Tillerson, the former Secretary of State, less so we're told with Mike Pompeo uh, that, that there might have been just some chafing of the back that as U.N. ambassador, you, I'm not saying you sort of second fiddle to the Secretary of State post or other foreign policy posts within the administration. Uh, you do have very gr great public exposure, et cetera. But whether that came into play here, uh, you know, whether it was having to toe a line by the likes of a John Bolton or a Mike Pompeo or this more in your face aggressive uh, foreign policy stance of this administration or that suited her to a day no, I, I really don't think this was so much about substance. It is true that it was an extraordinary fir and unique first year of the administration in which you had a secretary of state take such an incredibly low profile that our U.N. ambassador, uh, Ambassador Haley, essentially became the voice of U.S. foreign policy right. to the world, uh, which is something that clearly is no longer the case as Secretary Pompeo has firmly taken the, the reins at the State Department. All right. Well said. John Hanna, thank you very, very much, my friend. 